My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. There are many moments in Jesus' life that we read about in the Gospels when the Pharisees try to make him look bad in front of the others. And not just making him look bad, they want to catch him saying something scandalous to get him in trouble, perhaps with with the Jewish people or with Mosaic law, or to get him in trouble with the Roman Empire. The Pharisees are upset with the fact that Jesus was attracting many people, that he was considered to have more authority than the Pharisees themselves. And they were not happy with with the attention and the followers that Jesus was getting. And so, as a way to get him in trouble, they would plan very difficult questions that they would ask him in front of the crowds of people. Try to put him into a corner. And so one day, the Pharisees approach Jesus, and before they ask him the question that they had carefully planned out, they flatter him. They say, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. And you are not concerned with anyone's opinion, for you do not regard a person's status. If someone came to you or to me and flattered us in this way, a result could be that we would feel a certain pressure to answer the question that they're going to ask. I need to live up to the opinion that they have of me. I need to live up to my reputation as somebody who is wise, who always gives a good answer. Of course, Jesus, that would not be the case with you uh, because you do not have sin. You are not, your actions are not led by pride as ours often are. And so the question that they ask Jesus is whether it is lawful to pay taxes to the emperor, to the Roman emperor, or not. This this may seem like, at first, a harmless question, but it's not. Not at all. If Jesus says that it is lawful to pay the tribute, then he would have been seen as a collaborator with the Roman Empire, with the Roman occupiers. Remember, the Romans have have occupied the Holy Land, have occupied uh, and, and, and conquered the Jewish people. But if Jesus says that the tribute is illegitimate, then, um, then he risks being branded a political criminal and he could incur the wrath of Rome. And so it seems like whatever answer he gives, yes or no, he's going to get in trouble. Either with the Jewish people or with the Roman Empire. And so, Jesus, they probably thought that they had you cornered. But as we discover over and over again, trying to corner the Son of God is not a good idea. Um, And so he will actually ask them for a coin, for a denarius. And he asks them whose image is on that coin. And they say Caesar's. And so then Jesus gives his answer, Repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. So he stumps them. They were utterly amazed at him, as we read. They were utterly amazed at him. He changes the rules a little bit. He changes their question, or he he tweaks it, and he gives an answer that they did not expect. 
amazement. You and I also want to be amazed at God. Not just in the sense of how clever he is, but rather how awesome he is. Awesome in maybe the original sense of the word, but that God is awesome. He causes awe in us. To be in awe at the all-powerful creator of the world. To be in awe at the fact that the creator of the world is my friend and has died for me on the cross and forgives my sins anytime I want. But let's go back to the coin for a moment. There's something very significant here. Very significant indeed. The denarius, and we have some denarii uh, still with us today, the denarius has the profile of the face of the emperor. And the inscription on the coin reads, Caesar Augustus Tiberius, son of the divine Augustus. Caesar Augustus Tiberius, son of the divine Augustus. So son of the divine Augustus. Augustus had been divinized. Augustus was considered to have been a god. The Romans regarded him as God. And so the two previous emperors to Tiberius had been elevated to the divine. So the coin has the image of someone, Tiberius, who claims to be the son of God. And that coin is being handed to Jesus, who is the actual son of God. So you have an imposter, okay, on the coin, claiming to be the son of God, and that coin of the imposter is being given to the actual real son of God. Amazing, isn't it? Uh, it seems like God is, well, having a little fun, a sense of humor, if you will. And that in itself is something worth being in awe at. These details, Lord. These details which maybe I didn't know until now. Let's take that to other aspects of our life. Am I, do I want, wonder, do I have wonder when I, contem when I contemplate God's goodness, when I contemplate his kindness to me? Jesus, when I reflect on your desire to teach, to understand, to cure, to forgive, and you do it over and over and over again, you make the sun come up, as we could say, right? You give us a new day over and over and over again for each person. You are so good. You have cre created a world that is beautiful. That we find so much beauty, which is a testament to your beauty, Lord. How about God's presence in the Eucharist? In what looks like a, a piece of bread and is locked up in a box, a very beautiful box, which we call the tabernacle, and is reserved and is kept there, imprisoned there, so that you and I can go visit him and spend time with him. And then in the, in the correct moment, even to receive him, to eat him. And in this time of prayer, each one of us should make up our, our own list of things that we are grateful to God for, that we are, that, that, that lead us to this sense of awe and a sense of pride, a good pride, I guess we could say, that we are children of God, that God is my Father, that He who has done all this is my loving Father. And so may we grow in awe of our awesome God, to grow in gratitude, and to grow also in, as a consequence of that awe and of that gratitude and of the love in a spirit of service, that I am here to serve you, Lord. I am your servant. What do you want of me? 
You've given me so much. You've given me everything I have. What do you want of me? And that could be a wonderful question that we could use to end our time of prayer that uh, each one of us answers personally in the silence of our own hearts. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.